Welcome to Live Doff, your online Doff Yomi Shear. Shalom Aleichem and welcome back to a brand new Masechta, Masech HaSchulen. It's Chulen Daf Beis, we're at the Mishnah. This Masechta is called Chulen, but actually, interestingly, um, in, in Gemara terminology, it's referred to as Shechita Schulen. So in contrast to Masech HaSvachim, which is called Shechita Skachim, right? Svachim means the Karban is a Shech. So it's Shechita Skachim. Here we have a Masechta, which uh, will focus on just regular animals, Chulin animals, and the, the process of permitting them for consumption. So we know that a an animal, while it's alive, is considered a chai, and an aver min ha chai, a limb of a live animal, is forbidden. It was actually forbidden even for the goyim. Sheva mitzvah is noyach. And once the animal dies, whether from natural causes or otherwise, the animal is now a carcass and a vela. And the Pasuk says, don't eat. Lo yisaychlu kol nevela. Rather, in order to consume an animal or a bird, one has to perform shechita. Where they uh, they sever the um, the simonim simonim is a reference to the esophagus and the trachea the food pipe and the windpipe so by an animal one has to sever both or most of both right rave rave of each one by a bird it's uh, less than that at that point it becomes mutter in fact there's a pasuk which says v'zavachta mibukarcha mitzaincha instructing us to do shchita and only to eat in that fashion, in fact, we make a, uh, it's a mitzvah, we make a bracha on it, right? Says the Mishnah, Kol Shoichten, anybody's allowed to do shechita, U shechita sang shera, and if they do so, it's okay. Now, this seems to be sort of a contradiction in terms of phrageology. First we say, do it, which sounds like, lechat chila. And by the way, Rashi points out, uh, as we're going to see soon in the Gemara, that hakoil is uh, uh, sort of a broad reference. It's expanding it, including others that you wouldn't think are suitable, and the Gemara will give us two options, either we're speaking about a person who's, who's tame and he's doing shechita, um, that's okay, or one, uh, another pshat is that it's a kusi, or a mumar, a fellow who's not really adhering to the uh, Torah way of life, nevertheless, the mission says, he's allowed to do shechita, hakal shoichten, which sounds like it's lichat chilo, it's ideal, but then we say, shechitosan, you know, if they do it, it's kshir, it's okay. Sounds like it's after the fact, but the Evid, okay, we let it pass. So which way? Is it the Chathila or the Evid? The Gemara will deal with this. The Gemara will ask this um, apparent uh, contradiction. So everybody's okay for Shechita. Of course, there's an exception to the rule. One who's not really fully, uh, his mind isn't fully developed, he's not fully focused, he's not there, and... Uh, there is a very real concern that he might not do a proper shechita, he's not uh, able to do a proper shechita. Chutz mei cheresh, a person who's deaf, mute, shoita, deranged, v'katan, or a minor. Why? Shami yikankul, shechitas, they might ruin the shechita and not do it successfully. However, the mission concludes, but if it's under supervision, it's okay. V'chulon shashach to all these who did shechita, v'acherim, roi noison, under others' supervision. Then we say shechitas and shechita, it's okay because we ensure that it was done properly. Says the Gemara, Kol Shechten, sounds like it's Lachat Chila. Right? All can do Shechita. But then, we come back, Ush Chita Sang Sher, which sounds like it's only, well, if it's done, it's okay, the Yevet. So which way? Lachat Chila, the Yevet. Amalei Rav Ach, Bed Rav Ravash. You're assuming. And then when it says, Ha Koyal Shechten, it means Lachat Chila. Who says? Any hakoil means lechatchilo, which uh, triggers your whole uh, your whole question. If that's the case, I'll give you an example, another Mishnah where it says hakoil, but it's not lechatchilo. Hakoil mimirin. The Mishnah talks about tzmura. So you have a a kodesh animal before you, and you say, look, I want to make tzmura. I want to take another animal and sort of switch it, or actually it, it extends, it expands into the second one as well, because it's not going to take its place. When one makes tzmura, which by the way, you're not supposed to, there's a law not to do tzmura. You don't tinker, you don't, you know, transfer kedusha. But if one should do so, not only does the uh, 
new one become Kaddish, the original remains with Kedusha as well. But in any case, the Mishnah speaks about the, the, the process of Temura. All can do Temura, Kol Mimirin. Echad all have the ability. Ha'anoshim, Echad Anoshim, men, women. Ha'chanami, here too, are you going to say that Ha'koyl means Dilechat Chilahu, you meant to do it? Well, Ksiv, the Torah forbids it. Lo yachli fanem, v'lo yomero yisay toi bera, yorabe toi, whether, even if you were adding, uh, you're upgrading from bad to good, from good to, it doesn't matter. So basically, you're not supposed to. So apparently the Loshan Ha'koyl Mimirin doesn't indicate Lechat Chilah. Well, no, that's certainly different. Hasam Kedutani Taima, there the mission itself rectifies this uh, perception, clarifies this halacha. The mission itself comes back and says, I didn't mean lachat chila. No, I didn't mean to say you're allowed to do it. But if a person does this process, it works. So it takes effect. If it's it works, but he gets malchus. He gets 40 lashes. But that's an exception, but typically when it says hakoyl, like hakoyl shoyichtan, without a, a comeback, without a disclaimer, it means l'chat chila. Really? Ella? I'll give you another example. Hakoyl ma'arichan. All have the ability to make erech, which means to pledge, you know, the set value as prescribed in the Torah, um, depending on one's age or one's gender. So a person could commit to the erech, v'nerachin, and likewise, any person could be the subject of an erech. You can say, that erech of that person should be upon me. Noidrin, or you can pledge his actual market value, v'nedarin, any person could be the subject of that pledge. Hachanam l'chatchilahu? So it has the lashon hakoy, they mean it's preferred, it's ideal, it's advised? But it's not meant to pledge. Folks, if the Pesach says, you know what, better don't uh, issue pledges, lest you forget neglect to pay it. If you'll refrain from doing the dorim, you know what? Don't worry about being considered a sinner. Meaning, better that you refrain from committing to the dorim. In fact, there's another passage. Better that you do not engage in pledging rather than, and, than doing the dorim and not paying. Vitanya. And the Bryce explains on this, on this, you know, this passage. Toiv mizeh mizeh. Now the Pasuk means, when it says better, means, it means it's, it's the best option. Taiv mizeh umizeh. You have two options. Either you do an adder and you pay, or you pledge and you don't pay. You know what the best option is? Don't pledge. <laughs> That's what the Pasuk means. Taiv mizeh umizeh. Better than the other two options is just uh, you want to donate, donate money. Don't make pledges and run the risk of you know, not keeping them. Better than do nether, don't do nether at all. That's Ramir's opinion. The puzzle doesn't mean to extend. Uh, the puzzle is saying, look, the best option is fulfill your, your pledge. Keep your promise. And that's better than not pledging at all or pledging and not paying. But in any case, I feel Rabbi Yudu like Omar. Even Rabbi Yudu says, you know what, if you, uh, if you intend on paying, that's okay. That's only when he um, donated a, you know, a specific item. He says, this animal, so it's an item, object-based commitment. So in which case, even if something happens, you know, he's not responsible. Rashi adds another point. It's unlikely he's going to retract his pledge because he, uh, he designated the, the material. It was, you know, designated, set aside. We turn to Amadeus. Aval, but all agree that if it's a personal pledge, you have to keep away from that. Aval Omar, hurry a lie, but to say, I am going to pledge, I am going to give, I am. Loy, that's not preferred. So back to the Mishnah of Erechen. Erechen, by definition, is a personal pledge. I pledge such and such, you know, to uh, donate, you know, the value of this person. So that's a personal pledge. All agree it's not preferred, it's not recommended. So, despite the fact that the Mishnah used the word hakoyl marichen, apparently it's not indicative of idealism, of something which is recommended and preferred. So that sort of undoes the whole question on hand. We have a Mishnah, hakoyl shoyichten, which sounds like l'chatchil. Now we say, no, she doesn't share, it's only with the Evan. Which way? Who's to say that hakoyl means l'chatchil? We find a right from Erechon that it's not so. It says, more really? So you mean to say every hakoyl is not preferred? Is not l'chatchil? Ella, I'll give you another example. A couple of uh, examples, actually. Hakoyl chayyavim b'sukkah. All are obligated to sit in a sukkah. Or another example. Hakoyl chayyavim b'tiz. All are obligated to where it sits. Okay, now here too, you're going to say 
that the uh, the lashon hakoyla is not the lav lachatchila. Chayav lav lachatchila. It's not lachatchila. Uh, sure, it is. He meant to say nasuk. He meant to wear tzitzis. No, again, that's very different. Chayavin. There, the Mishnah follows with the word chayavin. Hakol chayavin. Oh, there's no question. That chayavin means that he meant to do it. Chayavin, like I mean, I wasn't talking about chayavin. That certainly means lachatchila, but simply hakoyl. Without chayav, and who's to say that's lachatchila? I'll give an example for that as well, says the Malamiyat. If that's the case, hakol soimchen. Mishnah says, all do smicha on the carbon, the ilin on the carbon before the offering. Echadanosh, mechadosh, men, women. Hachanami, here too, you're going to say that despite the word hakoyl, it means the love lachatchila is not meant to be done. Sure it is. But the Pasuk says, he meant to do smicha v'samach. Yod ebin irtza. Says the Gemara, okay, you got me. Of course. It's some and some. Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. We have examples where hakoyl is lechatchila, such as smicha. We have uh, where it's not, like the erchen and the nedar. Some yen, some no yen. Yeah, ika hakoyl lechatchila. Sometimes hakoyl means lechatchila. We call the yev. Sometimes it's with the yev. So back to our story. Back to our mishnah mechas What's triggering our question? Who's to say which way to go here? Ela hakoyl dahacha. So if that's the case, so the the, the term hakoyl and our mishnah hakoyl shayichten. What's the problem? Who says? Which was the basis for our question to begin with. The tikshilach which triggered your question uh, in terms of inconsistency with the next part of the Mishnah, which is only by the Ebed. Who's to say uh, what it means? Maybe Hakol Shech means by the Ebed. The Ebed will like tikshilach never you. You won't have any question to begin with. Armali says, of course it's a question. I know. Shechitah Shungshere Kachali. Take a look at the next phrase. Hakol Shechitah. Fine, that's obscure. We're not sure if it means L'Chathil B'Diyavid. Move on. Ushchitah Shungshere. That's certainly a B'Diyavid phrase. If he did it, it works. Kachali. That triggered the question. Why? B'Diyavid Tanish Shungshere. Once the Mishnah continues and speaks about B'Diyavid, Mechlal, apparently, that up until that point, the 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 lashon hakol shaychtin michlal apparently the hakol the word hakol the chatchilo it's not only the chatchilo because otherwise it's repetition it's just saying the same thing twice chatchilo the the eved because if it's also by the eved so ushkitos and ksheres by the eved and the beginning hakol shaychtin is by the eved why say it twice hakhtarti twice on the same reference the eved lomeli what's the point so that confirms what we were saying all along. Hakol Shaykhtin is l'chatchila. Then, but but the Eved, Ushka doesn't share that works. That's a contradiction. Whoever we're talking about, right? Is he allowed to or not allowed to? Says the more you write. The Mishnah is speaking in short form. Sometimes the Mishnah speaks like that. We have to insert some more elements here to make it work. Amar Rabba Barulu. We're talking about two different people. Hachik Tani, the Mishnah means like this. We start Hakol Shaykhtin, which of course means l'chatchila. Even if the fellow doing the shkitas is tamay. Bechulin and shechting a non carbon animal, just a plain animal. Is he allowed to? Yes, lechatchil. Hakol shechting, even tamay bechulin lechatchil. Now, before we continue to explain the next part of the statement, the Gemara takes a short stop. Once I hold it, what do you say? The Mishnah is coming to inform us that a tamay can shecht chulin. I mean, why not? What's the issue? What's the concern? Tamay? Doing a shechita bechul in my memory. Why even discuss that? There's no problem. There's no isra making uh, an animal tummy. Yes, bechul and shenasu altaras akodesh. We're speaking about chulin, which were treated like kodesh. Rashi explains. You know, at times, a person will commit himself to protect the chulin as though it's kodesh, in order to accustom himself to habitualize himself, get him, get him used to. Adhering to the halachas of tahara, eating only with tahara, so that when he gets to real kachim, he'll be uh, he'll be an expert. And Rashi explains that with the rabbanon, you have to abide by that. It's like a it's like a pledge. So now he has to preserve the tahara of this animal, even though technically it's it's, it's allowed to become tummy. But since he personally pledged to keep it this way, he has to keep to it. Because so far the mission is going with the shita that uh, it's obligatory. He's committed to that track. To protect it from tumah, because savar chulen, even mundane material shenasu, which are being processed al taras hakodesh with that higher standard, ki kodesh don't have to be treated like kodesh. So that's the case here, and the mission allows 
allows a tummy to do shrita on the on the chun, which is meant to be protected. Why? Kesar said, how's he going to do it? I mean, if he's doing shrita, he's going to touch it. And Tesla says, you know, even if he tries to keep away, the fact is when he's doing the shrita, you know, the, the animal now becomes, turns into food, and is makabal tumma. Kate said, boy, says, what should he do? Maybe sakana rucha, he has this uh, ultra long knife, and he stands at a distance, does shrita, to ensure that he doesn't come into contact, direct contact with the, with the, uh, with the flesh. Kadesh al iga babasr. So that's the first halach in the Mishnah. Koil all, even a tummy can do shechita, even on this type of case, from a distance. And they were not concerned that perhaps he'll touch, because the whole thing is only with the Rabbanon, right? So we don't sort of add another gzeira, another, you know, level of stringency. So as long as you do your part to keep away, not to touch, you go, Ubi and the Mishnah continues. But in the case where it's a real carbon, where you're not allowed to touch it, if you touch it, it's an isma de raisa. Rashi blings a pasuk, vani hine nesat lechash mismeres tumuraisa tumurumoisa. He meant to guard, to preserve the holiness of truma of kachim. So there it's minat Torah. It's a notch higher here. We keep you far, far away, lest you come into direct contact with the kachim. Ubi mukdashim lo yishchait. He shouldn't touch. He shouldn't do shchita when he's tummy by kachim. Shema he give a bus. He might touch the bus even from a distance. Don't use a long knife. Because you might. That's the chatechil of him. Shachat. Suppose he did the shchit from a distance. From when he says, "Look, I vouch. I never touched it. Barely. I'm clear. I'm, I'm confident. Shlai negati. I didn't touch the shchit asuk shayr. Then it works. Okay. So now we resolve this uh, dilemma in terms of the opening statement of our mesechta. Hakol shayichten. Ush shchit asuk shayr. Here we say hakol shayichten. Go ahead. Ush shchit asuk shayr. It's only after the fact. What's going on? And here it has to be the because the second part is bit the evidence. And if the first part is bit the evidence, it's just a repeti- it's un- unnecessary repetition. So clearly we're talking about two different cases. We're talking about a person's tummy. First is he's approaching Khulan, which is meant to be preserved by Kedusha. Meant to be preserved from Tuma. So he's gonna try not to touch it. How? By using a long knife, and that's okay. Then what about doing the same with Kachim? No. But there it's Minatura, we're concerned that he might actually but of course, if he does it, Ush Chitos and Kshira, if he vouches for it, Tahara, he says, I didn't touch it, then it's okay. The Mishnah continues with the third halacha, third level, where it's not even good by the event. Chutz Mechir Shait Vakat, these fellows are not, uh, don't have the ability, the wherewithal to do it properly. Tafil Bechul and Grady, even if it's a regular animal. The Evet Namilo, even after the fact. The Shkita was done. It's invalid. Why? Because maybe they messed up. Shem Yishu, maybe they delay. Shem Yidr, so they'll. Um, apply too much pressure, they'll twist the knife the wrong way. So the, even with the evidence it doesn't work. There's a very real concern that it wasn't a successful shrita. Concludes the Mishnah, but if there's supervision, that changes the whole equation. Now all of these who did shrita, now if it's referring back to this case of the Cheresh of Katna, we just say, you know, Vim uh, if they did, Vichulan and all, apparently it's referring to another case, other people. Ahai, what's going on? Ilema, is it referring back to this case just learned? Acheresh Shaita Vichatan. Ilema, Acheresh Shaita Vichatan. Allah Koyit. Well, naturally, it's going right back there. It doesn't have to go and re emphasize and restate Vichulan Shashachtu. It should just say Vim Shachtu. But if they did Shrita, then under supervision, it's okay. Ella, rather, Atami Vichulan. It's also going back in the first case of the Mishnah. It's alluding to that case too. This is explained that it's going on the Cheshit Vikatan. That under supervision it works, as you ensure that it's okay. And it's also going back in the first case of a Tami doing Chula. So if it's under supervision, it works. Well, why do you need supervision there? Ha'am is just finished telling me the Chatchila Nami a Tami with Chula? That's the Chatchila, you don't need supervision. Vel Atami Vikdash. Rather, it's going on the next case. The Tommy doing Shrita the Makdashim. So he shouldn't do it, but under supervision it works. Skip supervision. If he vouches for it, it's also fine. You don't need supervision. But Barili Sagi, just saying, I'm clear, I'm confident, I know f- that's enough. The answer is the lesson come on the Nishai, the fellow's not here anymore, the Sheikh is not here, so we can't verify whether he touched or not. But if there was supervision, as a Mashgiach, who can vouch that it wasn't tampered with, then it's okay. So, at this point, we have basically three parts to the Mishnah. We have the Chathchila, a Tameh by Chulan, 
from a distance with a long knife. We have Bidi Ebed, Tame with Kachim. Okay, if he, if he knows he didn't touch it, it's okay. And then we have a case where it's totally invalid. Cheder, who don't have the expert, don't have the, don't have the ability. And then it's possibly even Bidi Ebed, unless there was a Mashkiach, there was supervision. That changes the host. Ask the Gemara. So, according to the way we're learning, the Mishnah refers to a Tameh doing Shechita on, on a Karban. Now, this has been discussed way back in Zvachim. Right? We all know Zvachim, Menachim. Now we're chulin already. We already know the Mishnah in Zvachim. Hai Tameh b'mikdashim. Now, to this allow the, the Tameh to do Shechita in the Mikdashim, the Chathchila, Menachim, Menachim, is that based on this Mishnah? Menachim, Menachim, it's been learned in a different Mishnah. Kol Apsula, and Sheshach, Tosh, 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 even Apostle, Tosh, Shechita works. Shachita can be performed by non coin Benash, and women, Bavadim, Ubatzmeim. I feel about Kachi Kadosh, even Kachi Kadosh. These people do Shachita works. Now, Ubatzmeim, Layu Tzmeim, Noyim Basar. Provided, you know, the Tommy doesn't touch the Basar. So, bottom line is, it's been discussed in great length elsewhere. So uh, why repeat it over here in Chulim? Says the Gemara. Hacha uh, Iker. This was really the main place of discussion because we're talking about Hacha uh, Shchita. This was the uh, central, you know, area uh, of discussion. Hasam, but the Mishnah Zvachim. It just, you know, I did a ton of sharp psulin. Once we're speaking about the other psulin that are uh, unique to. Uh, you know, to, to the, the carbon carbonized discussion. So the Mishnah throws in the tummy as well, but that's not really the, the focal point of that, you know, of that halacha. Another way is the other way. Really, the Mishnah Zvachim is the focal point because that's the, uh, that's what we discussed, the, uh, the topics of, of, of carbonates, right? So that's what we have to talk about, the tummy doing shkita. Hacha, and the reason why it's been inserted now, Mishnah, was just agav. I did a ton of tummy v'chulen. Once we're on the topic of a tummy doing shkitan chulan, so we throw it in for good measure as well. Tani nami, tummy mikdashim, we throw in the aloch of tummy mikdashim. Okay. It's not really repetition. Now, just one more point. Let's just clarify this circumstance. Well, what's going on with this tummy? What level of, of tummy is he experiencing? How is he going to salvage his behemoth from becoming tummy? I mean, he's tummy, and that tummy will now be transferred through the knife to the, uh, to the animal. How is he going to keep it tar? Hi, tummy. This fellow who's tummy, the tummy of my, what? type of Tumah did he have? What did he touch to become Tumah? What level does he have? Did he touch a real mace? That's out. Because, you know, a mace occupies the highest tier of Tumah. It's called Aviyah Vois HaTumah. He's like the grandfather. If you touch a mace, you become Av HaTumah. You become a father of Tumah, which is also a pretty strong Tumah, which can now generate Tumah on a cleave. So you touch the knife, the knife becomes Tumah. Not only that, if the knife is, is uh, right, if it's a metal utensil, that utensil will be upgraded. It, it gets the same tumah as the transmitter. Bechalal cherev or Rachmana, the pasuk is speaking about a person who was killed by a, a, a sword. Bechalal cherev. Why mention the sword? The pasuk is telling us. We're up to Gimel and Al. The the weapon used to kill a person that came into contact with that. Tip, Gets the same identical tumma as the as the as the mace. So if metal touches a mace, it becomes avi avi satuma. If it touches a person who touched the mace, who now he himself is avatuma, he touches a knife. That knife becomes avatuma. It doesn't even drop a level. Cher of the knife, the, the sword, harayu kechol has the same exact identical level as the chol as the mace himself. So bottom line is, when a person touched the mace, he becomes an avatuma. Now when he touched the knife, avatumu. So he's an avatuma l'tami l'sakin. So when he touches the, uh, the the knife, the knife becomes an avatuma, and in turn the knife will be matami the basar. During the shkita, the azal sakin, the knife will go along and transmit his tumah to the basar. So how are you going to get away? How are you going to get out of? How are you going to preserve the, the basar's tar? Elo the tami Oh, it must be that there was no mace involved. Just a sheriff, a person touched a dead lizard or something, so now the person now becomes a um, a Rishon, because the sheriff is an Avatumma, 
one notch less than a mace. So the person becomes a rishon. Now when he touches a knife, the knife will not be affected by a rishon. That's the Allah Rashi brings. Only an avatuma, a source of tumma, can actually transmit and be matami a kli. But in this case, when he touches the sheretz, the person is just a, a rishon, and he touches the... Uh, which means the next level of Tumah, one notch less, and when he touches a Sakan, it will not be affected, so the Sakan remains to her, and now it doesn't uh, contaminate the Basra. The boys have another way to learn. We're speaking that a person touched a mace. So why doesn't it get transferred to the knife? Because it's not a Kli, it's not a utensil, it's a piece of... Uh, piece of wood. Okay, going Shabadak, he inspected, a piece of a reed. Basically, he found a piece of a kana, just a random piece of wood, made sure that it's nice and sharp. Shachaba did the shrita, and it's valid. So, since it's, it's not really a kli, it's not going to be susceptible to tumma. And, uh, there's no issue of tumma transfer. The sound we find in Mishnah, Bryce, you can use that for shrita. You don't have to use a proper utensil. But kal shrita, you can use anything for shrita. Ben Batsur, a rock, a piece of glass, a piece of kana, or this kana wood. So, the, uh, the basra will be preserved and unaffected by the shaykhids status, so um, yeah, as long as he ensures that he didn't touch the, the boss, so the boss was safe and sound. Okay, let's recap uh, today's daf. Very simple. So we have a Mishnah called Shechten, Shlossing Sheira, which we learn as follows. We're talking about a person who's Tameh. What level of Tumah? We just discussed. Uh, and he's engaged in doing Shechita on Chulun, which is meant to be preserved by Tahara. It's a Chulun which he pledged to keep to her. As long as you're at a distance and you make sure you're not to touch, you're okay. Not so when it comes to karbon is there, the the, uh, the stakes are higher. Minatera, it cannot become tummy. So there we don't allow even from a distance, lest you come and touch the basar. But be if you did it, you know for sure you can vouch that you didn't touch it. It's okay. Level three is a cheir shayt v'kat. We're not really able, don't have the ability to do proper shechita. There we say it's puzzle, unless it was done under supervision. We found uh, in some places hakoyl means lachatchila. Certainly when it says chayovin. Sometimes it doesn't necessarily mean the but now Mishnah certainly a kol shechita means the because then it comes back and says ushtosin kshera which is b'diavet so apparently a kol shechita is lachatchila and we resolve that that issue it's going in different you know different cases um, and we uh, analyze the uh, the issue of uh, tumah transfer how is the buser preserved. Uh, Protected from tumah, despite the fact that there was a knife, which is a transmitter. We have two pshatim. Either the the person was only tummy sheretz, which doesn't have the ability to transmit through the the knife, or the knife wasn't really a knife; it was just a kremishal kana, which is uh, immune from tumah. Okay, but Hashem tomorrow will continue with Abayi's approach to the Mishnah and explaining the opening statement, resolving the lechatchila b'diavid quandrum. All the best to you, not